There have always been and always will be confrontational talk show moments and awkward live celebrity interviews. So brace yourself because we're about to dive into some cringy on-camera interactions that pull zero punches. David Letterman wasn't bashful about revealing that it had taken a long time and over 80 invitations for Cher to finally appear as a guest on his show in 1986. When she did, the late show turned into a battle of wits, thanks to the legendary singer's disarming candor. Letterman kick-started his long-awaited interview with a curious line of questioning about Cher's scent. You, you smell terrific. You really smell great. The singer obliged, explaining to Letterman the perfume cocktail that made her smell good, but not without a well-timed quip. Is this as good as it gets? From Cher's end, it got even better. When asked what took her so long to say yes to appearing on the show, Cher came up with an intriguing reply about having a huge hotel bill and needing the appearance fee to pay it off. She then went for the jugular. I thought that I would never want to do this show with you. Because you thought I was uh, uh... an ass. As cheers and jeers filled the studio, Cher went on to reveal that she had actually communicated her feelings about Letterman to one of the staffers on his show. Just before diverting the conversation to a less prickly topic, Letterman waved the white flag. And we're happy, we're happy you're finally here. Now, let's talk about something else. Madonna's interview with David Letterman in 1994 was so way out that even today, it remains inexplicable and yet still legendary. I'm only here because there isn't a Knicks game. Don't get excited. Oh, come on! Laden with expletives, a record 14 F-bombs, and inappropriate jokes, this episode of The Late Show was portrayed as an undignified moment in Madonna's storied career. But between her more outrageous costumes and the endless criticism that came her way, the world conveniently forgot that it was Letterman who actually fired the first shot, introducing her as a woman who had, quote, slept with some of the biggest names in the entertainment industry. He then prodded her further. Let's go kiss the guy in the audience. Why don't you go kiss Why the guy in the audience? So obsessed with my sex life? The interview grew progressively R-rated from there, with the singer calling Letterman a sick at one point. Though the controversy seemingly didn't tarnish the pair's relationship given her subsequent appearances on a show, it did prompt the superstar to set the record straight about a few things. When asked about her cussing during an interview with Spin Magazine, Madonna replied, David Letterman knew I was going to do it. And in an interview with People, she went on to claim that the show's producers had even encouraged her to do the bit, saying, The way he introduced me was derogatory, so my whole thing was, okay, if that's how you want to play it, you cannot beat me at this game. Taylor Swift found herself in the midst of a brazenly sexist interview on the Grammy's red carpet in 2015 when Entertainment Tonight reporter Nancy O'Dell suggested that the singer was going to, quote, walk home with more than maybe just a trophy. The conversation began with O'Dell complimenting Swift on her look, along with the customary pan of the camera that showed the whole of her Ellie Saab cutout dress. But in the very next moment, things got super awkward when O'Dell made a super sketchy comment. I just wanted to show the legs, because as I was telling you ahead of time, you're going to walk home with more than maybe just a trophy tonight. I think lots of men. The 14-time Grammy winner gave Odell what can only be described as an unrelenting stare. After a short pause, Swift retorted, I'm not gonna walk home with any men tonight. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go hang out with my friends, and then I go home to the cats. Odell's line of questioning was widely criticized, and not just by Swift's faithful army of fans. In fact, the interview made headlines and generated plenty of media attention. Swift, meanwhile, was cheered on for handling the situation with poise and for being fearless in the face of Odell's tasteless remarks. As the most decorated U.S. gymnast in Olympic history, Simone Biles knows what it takes to win, and one can be sure that it's taken more than just social pleasantries for her to get where she is today. This concept was apparently lost on the Dancing with the Stars panel, though, some of whom tried to school the GOAT on the importance of smiling when she was on stage. After she finished one of several dances she aced on season 24, the judges' feedback placed heavy emphasis on Biles' expressions. The last time I showed emotion, it was at the Olympics and I got a bronze instead of gold. The gymnast, who was 20 at the time, explained her lack of experience with the kind of emotions required on the dance stage, given that she'd spent more than half of her life training in the gym. Then, to make things worse, host Tom Bergeron pressed further. I was waiting for you to smile at some of the compliments. You didn't. Biles' reply was sharper this time around, after she flashed a megawatt grin. Smiling doesn't win you gold medals. <laughs> Bergeron later admitted to his blunder on sex, lies, and spray tans, saying, She was brilliant. I was so properly put in my place. Dakota Johnson's unforgettable 2019 takedown of Ellen DeGeneres made for one of the best and worst moments of The Ellen DeGeneres Show. When DeGeneres began brazenly questioning Johnson about not receiving an invite to her birthday party, things turned awkward pretty fast. Johnson retorted, "'Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited.'" And Johnson didn't stop there. She brought out the receipts, saying, "'Last time I was on the show, last year, you gave me a bunch of 
for not inviting you, but I didn't even know you wanted to be invited. But I did invite you, and you didn't come. Despite Johnson's insistence, DeGeneres continued to claim she hadn't received an invite until, finally, a crew member piped in to say, you were out of town. That was amazing, <laughs> by the way. Like, amazing. We don't know what actually transpired behind the scenes, but as far as the internet was concerned, Johnson emerged the clear winner. When the moment was brought up during an interview with Low PCL, Johnson replied, It will haunt me. Jerry Seinfeld may be regarded as one of the world's foremost comedic performers, but he seemed to be in no mood to humor CNN host Larry King's questions during an ill-fated 2007 interview. Though he was on Larry King Live to talk about his film B-Movie, the conversation inevitably turned to Seinfeld's iconic sitcom, which ran on NBC from 1989 to 1998. King seemed less than up to speed. So you gave it up, right? I did. So. They didn't cancel you. You canceled them. Seinfeld looked at him incredulous. You're not aware of this? That's when the interview began going south, with both men speaking over each other. You think I got canceled? Are you under the impression that I, I, I got canceled? You, I hurt you, Jerry. Seinfeld fired back at him and the channel's research team. I thought don't, that was pretty well documented. Don't this is, a, shows is this still there. CNN? The heated banter continued for a while longer, with Seinfeld listing his show's success metrics for King until, at last, the seemingly endless awkwardness ended with King calling for a break. It was only in 2021, when King died, that Seinfeld cleared the air around the infamous interview, posting on X, Always loved Larry King and will miss him. The canceled bit was just me having fun with his little mistake, nothing more or less. It's not uncommon to hear of television reporters fumbling on air, but few dug themselves into a hole as deep as Sam Rubin did while interviewing Samuel L. Jackson for KTLA in 2014. Well, did you get a lot of reaction to that Super Bowl commercial? What Super Bowl commercial? In an embarrassing case of mistaken identity, the late entertainment reporter seemed to have confused the Pulp Fiction star with fellow actor Lawrence Fishburne, asking him about a Super Bowl commercial he never did. Jackson immediately caught on to the mix-up and didn't lose time berating the anchor. Right. I'm not Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> oh, you're oh, maybe right. all black and famous. You but are we all guilty. Look alike. I am Ruben was visibly faced and spluttered apologies as the KTLA camp tried to defuse the situation. But Jackson wasn't done giving his host a lesson in good journalism. You're the entertainment reporter right. for this station? Vlog. And you don't know the difference between I know me and Lawrence Fishburne? My, my he went on to lay out a differentiation between Hollywood's top crop of black actors that included himself, Fishburne, and Morgan Freeman. While Jackson clearly didn't care for the gaffe, he later referenced the situation by wearing a t-shirt that read, I'm not Lawrence Fishburne. Jonah Hill has often hit back at hosts who got a little too personal about him on camera. In 2016, he took things up a notch by reacting with more than just words, following an unsavory incident in France. He was on the talk show Le Grand Journal to promote his film War Dogs with co-star Miles Teller, when the conversation turned sexual and, going by the expression on Hill's face, rather awkward. Referencing Hill's ensemble comedy, This Is The End, host Ornella Fleury mentioned that she enjoyed watching his character, quote, get sodomized by a three-meter-tall demon. Hill replied with a not-safe-for-work comeback of his own. Demon? Yes. That's not good. That's not good. Fleury kept the NSFW tone of the interview going by describing a fantasy she claimed to have had about Hill, in which he summoned his friends Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio and left her alone with them. Hill, who was tuned into a translation of the interview through his earpiece, didn't take the exchange well and made his displeasure known, saying, I'm glad I came on the show to get ridiculed by your local weather girl. According to reports, the incident prompted Hill to cancel the rest of his press tour in France. Fleury eventually issued a public apology, implying that she had misjudged the extent to which she could joke with him. Joan Rivers' blunt humor wasn't easily digestible, often proving too acerbic for people's tastes and leaving her with no dearth of public feuds. Despite the fire she started, there was no disputing the legendary status Rivers occupied in the world of comedy, which went beyond her penchant for controversy. So when the funny woman felt she was being needled about the shock value she brought to the table on a CNN interview in 2014, she decided to hit back. You really think that uh, 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 Nicki Minaj cares I didn't like her dress. Oh. CNN anchor Frederica Whitfield questioned Rivers on everything from her comments on Nicki Minaj and Princess Diana to the fur she wore on her book cover, and Rivers didn't appreciate it. You Activist know, this whole Peter. interview is becoming a defensive interview. Ultimately, Rivers ended up storming out, but not without telling an incredulous Whitfield to shut up. Explaining her walkout to the rap later, Rivers said, She did not seem to understand we were talking about a comedy book and not the transcripts from the Nuremberg trial. Every question was an accusatory one designed to put me on the defensive. Life is very tough, and if you can make a joke to make something easier and funny, do it. In a separate segment, Whitfield revealed that Rivers had continued to utter some cuss words after walking out of frame. 
When Angelina Jolie shared a kiss with her brother, James Haven, the night she won an Oscar in 2000, comedians and commentators at large had a field day, making endless jokes about the supposedly incestuous incident. One of them was Jay Leno. Now, I heard a rumor that you guys were a little mad at me because we were, we were doing some jokes about you. It's no secret that Jolie doesn't play around when it comes to her family. So when she was invited on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno later that same year, she went bearing receipts that incriminated the host. Pretty much right off the bat, Jolie set out to put the record straight. You know, when somebody says stuff about your family, mm -hmm. or it just, it's just not okay, and my mom's been just not okay about the stuff about me and my brother. She then brandished a piece of paper that supposedly contained highlights of the remarks Leno had made in reference to Jolie and Haven's relationship, which Jolie said made their mother sick. Oh, you know how Billy Bob knew Angelie was attracted to him? because she said he was like a brother to her. Leno was visibly thrown off balance, and after reading a couple of his jokes out loud at Jolie's command, tried to justify his actions by saying that he'd been just one of many people who told jokes about her. Jolie then proceeded to give him a little lesson about growing a spine. You know, it's good of you to just jump in with everybody else, you know. Well, no, but no, Sometimes no, 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 it's good no, to, like, see, stand up for something. Matthew McConaughey may be more candid than most actors about politics, but he doesn't play when it comes to provocative questions on the subject. The star was on The View in 2023, regaling the panel with stories about his family life and work projects, when host Joy Behar, who was aware that McConaughey had been flirting with the idea of getting into politics, threw him a curveball. Do you think he could get elected in Texas being anti-gun? While a discussion about McConaughey's potential political run prompted Behar's blunt query, he refused to take the bait. One thing about if, if, if me and politics is to give you a direct statement right there is yeah. be playing a game that I'm not interested in playing. Okay. Behar gave up, and even as the audience enjoyed this dramatic endgame, McConaughey was clearly unamused, and the camera cut to host Whoopi Goldberg, who changed the subject. Red carpet gaffes are all but guaranteed during award season, coming about either as awkward celebrity encounters or erroneous statements caught on camera for posterity. One such foot-in-the-mouth moment occurred in 2015 at the Screen Actors Guild Awards, when television presenter Danielle Dembski complimented actor Rashida Jones on her tan. Overlooking the fact that Jones is of black descent, Dembski showered the star with a bevy of presumably well-meaning remarks. You look like you've just come off like an island or something. You're very tan, very tropical. Known for her impeccable comic timing, Jones turned the supposed compliment on its head with a deadpan retort and fired back. I mean, you know, I'm ethnic. The whole thing was uncomfortable to watch and has since turned into internet gold. Talking about the viral moment to The New Yorker years later, Jones explained, I was a little grumpy, I'm going to admit. I was like, not today, Jesus, not today. She went on to explain how her background ties in with her identity, saying, I don't want to show up and try to represent something that I'm not. More than anything, Sandra Bullock's infamous 2009 interview with Today Show host Matt Lauer is uncomfortable to watch. The star was on the show to talk about her film The Proposal, during which Lauer seemed to be fixated on a nude scene. Not long after the interview began, Lauer started in. The major thing that's okay. changed since you were here last? Yes. I have now seen you naked. <laughs> Bullock let out a laugh before asking Lauer if he was able to sleep afterwards, and didn't let him off easy when she caught his eyes wandering over her body. Why are you looking down? The call-out should have signaled to Lauer to drop the subject, but he didn't seem to get the hint. Naked for most of this movie. An exasperated Bullock protested. Then, a little later into their conversation, Lauer again brought up the nude scene unprompted. Bullock was visibly less amused this time, pointing out to Lauer that he'd been talking about her nudity for the majority of the interview. It didn't seem like she was entirely joking either when she told Lauer she wouldn't return to the show after the way things transpired. Bullock, come back more often. No, not after this interview. <laughs> the inappropriate exchange went viral nearly a decade later, when accusations of sexual misconduct against Lauer surfaced. Cara Delevingne's 2015 interview with CBS's Good Day Sacramento was doomed to fail right from the start, when anchor Marianne McCleary introduced her incorrectly. Carla Delevingne is in the movie. Delevingne, who was there to promote her film Paper Towns, refrained from correcting her host, but eventually let her deadpan sarcasm speak for itself. When McCleary asked Delevingne if she'd had the chance to read the John Green book on which her film was based, she fired off a sharp reply. Uh, no, I never read the book or the script, actually. I kind of winged it. This earned some chuckles from the hosts before the interview got progressively awkward, and no one was laughing anymore. Delevingne's sarcastic tone foregrounded most of her responses, so much so that, at one point, the hosts asked about her demeanor, which Delevingne attributed to an emotional premiere the night before, followed by an early morning interview. I saw you in London talking a couple weeks ago on TV, and you seemed a lot more excited about it than you do right now. Are you just exhausted? Then, McClary piled on, harping on Delevingne's attitude. You do seem a bit, <laughs> a bit irritated. Perhaps it's just us. 
Yeah, yeah, I think it's just you. Things had definitely heated up, and McCleary's suggestion that Delavine quote, take a little nap, maybe get a Red Bull, did nothing to help cool them down. After the interview was cut short, the host went off about Delavine. She Ooh. was in a mood. The actor later responded with a single statement on X, reading, Some people just don't understand sarcasm or the British sense of humor. It's not always an upsetting question from an interviewer that can set a celebrity off. Sometimes, the interviewer alone can be enough. Chelsea Handler seemed thoroughly unimpressed by Piers Morgan's behavior when she appeared on a CNN show in 2014. Morgan, a polarizing media figure, was not very polite to Handler, who called him out on it during an on-air segment. And she didn't mince words. Handler told off Morgan for using his phone mid-interview. I mean, in the middle of the commercial break, I want your viewers to know, I mean, you can't even pay attention for 60 seconds. You're a terrible interviewer. Morgan tried to justify things by claiming Handler was unable to hold his attention, but the funny woman was having none of it. There's well, but I, that's not my me. problem. You're, what is your problem? This is your show. You have to pay attention to the guests that you invited on your it's show. So interesting. The argument went on a little longer before Handler delivered the final blow. Well, maybe that's why your job is coming to an end. <laughs> Only a month prior to Handler's devastating comeback, CNN had decided to pull the plug on Morgan's show. Years later, when the British host locked horns with Meghan Markle, Handler dug out her own Morgan interview and shared it on Instagram, writing, Some ass get better. Some just stay the same. Imagine going down in history as the guy who dissed acting legend Helen Mirren. She was already a rising star on the British theater circuit when she appeared on the talk show Parkinson in 1975, only to be introduced by host Michael Parkinson as a sex queen. The critics spend as much time discussing her physical attributes as assessing her acting ability. One called her an amorous boa constrictor. From there, the interview had nowhere to go but downhill. Once Mirren was seated, she handled the thorny situation with grace until Parkinson moved on to questions about her acting ability. And unfortunately, his line of inquiry didn't get any less sexist. I mean, you are, um, in quotes, a serious actress. He then went on to ask if her, quote, equipment was a hindrance to her status as such. Mirren cross-questioned Parkinson about the euphemism equipment until he gave a more graphic explanation, citing her, quote, figure. Tricky as it was, Mirren was ready with a pointed response. Because serious actresses can't have big bosoms, is that what you mean? In later years, the star revealed that her sit-down with Parkinson had been the first of its kind for her. Speaking with The Telegraph, she revealed, I was terrified. Mirren then went on to deservedly pat herself on the back for navigating the interview so well. She also spared some choice words for Parkinson, saying, he denies it to this day that it was sexist, but of course he was. Back in 2012, Zac Efron and Taylor Swift joined forces to deliver one of the most savage burns ever on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, and in the form of a song, no less. This was long before the host of allegations against DeGeneres came to light. Three top producers have now, quote, parted ways. But the horror stories keep coming. But if their practical joke was anything to go by, it seems that celebrities had been calling attention to the more problematic aspects of DeGeneres' interviews for years. Efron and Swift did it by humorously riffing on a version of Foster the People's Pumped Up Kicks. Efron sang, Ellen works a long day, giving weird interviews in a slick, cool sweater. And it gets kind of weird, yeah, calling us out like we're boyfriend and girlfriend. Swift and Efron, who co-starred on The Lorax, then launched into a duet that described how weird things got every time they came on her show. Swift went on to recall the time DeGeneres hid in a bathroom with a camera to scare her, also calling the host out for her relentless questions about her dating history. Surprisingly enough, DeGeneres didn't have a comeback for the occasion. Jane Fonda has never been shy about the many cosmetic changes she's undergone over the course of her long career, but she was evidently in no mood to discuss it with Megyn Kelly on a 2017 episode of Today, while she was promoting her film Our Souls at Night. As soon as Kelly broached the subject of aging and veered into the topic of what work Fonda had done, the star's displeasure was immediately clear. She made no effort to hide it either, responding to Kelly's question with a sharp retort. We really want to talk about that <laughs> The awkward moment soon escalated into a public feud, and Fonda didn't hold back from taking a swipe at Kelly every now and then. During one such incident, she told Variety that she didn't think Kelly was a good interviewer. No, I, it wasn't like I was, you know, uh, upset. I was just stunned. It was so inappropriate. Kelly didn't take the criticism lying down and soon responded on her Today segment. Fonda was on to promote a film about aging. And if Fonda really wants to have an honest discussion about older women's cultural face, then her plastic surgery is tough to ignore. Kelly could have stopped there, but didn't, taking tensions a smidge higher by calling Fonda's political opinions into question for good measure. 
With series like Hell's Kitchen and the more recent Idiot Sandwich, Gordon Ramsay has turned his trademark temper into commercial success. But it didn't seem like the celebrity chef was making a show of his annoyance when he was interviewed by Carl Stefanovic and Lisa Wilkinson on the Australian Breakfast Show Today back in 2008. Ramsay was in Australia at the time, caught in the midst of a controversy surrounding his expletive-laden programs that had prompted the Australian Parliament to launch an inquiry. Ironically, this interview wasn't devoid of swearing either. One of the high points of the exchange, and Ramsay's seeming displeasure, came when Wilkinson questioned him about media reports that he'd had Botox injections. Ramsey went off. Yeah, now, you're a smart girl, right? Next, he tossed in a profane joke that caused Stefanovic's eyebrows to shoot up. Do you actually think I've had Botox? <laughs> Do you think I need my money back? I mean, are you stupid? His hosts laughed at this. It was difficult to gauge Ramsey's reaction when an arguably fearless Stefanovic brought the subject of Botox up again later in the conversation, causing Ramsey to respond sharply, but with a little chuckle. <laughs> Around. Whether he was kidding around or not, he walked off the interview right after. 